What is going on, everybody? Welcome back once again to another episode of a Stonewalls Perspective podcast. I'm your host, Alexander Stone. In this episode, we have another very special guest with us. He's one of my friends. Uh, he goes to his local church, which is also my local church, uh, Abundant Life Church in Lee Summit, Missouri. Please welcome my friend, Drew Shahande. How are you doing today? Doing great. You? I'm doing well. It is such an honor to have you on. Uh, like I said, uh, Drew is one of my friends. He's just a servant. He loves Jesus. He loves the Lord. Um, and he's been wanting to be on my podcast for a while now. And I finally had the time to get him on. Um, this this guy loves Jesus. He loves Jesus more than anything in this world. And he will go out of his way uh, to serve you, uh, to let you know, to, to let you know that you are loved by Jesus and by him. Um, and he just really wants anyone and everybody that he sees, meets, or comes across to know the love of Christ because he's experienced the love of Christ. Um, and, you know, so I was talking with Drew about what he wanted to talk about in this episode. And, and he said that he wanted to talk about the Bible's response to man-made idols. And, you know, we can see that a lot in today's day and age. We can see that in um, really everything. People are idolizing their phones. They're idolizing media. They're idolizing television. They're idolizing uh, America even. And, you know, it's, it's wrong. The Bible points to there being only one God. And when we build up these kinds of idols, like I just mentioned, it's unbiblical. It does not please the Lord. And it's time to return to um, how Jesus wants it to be. So Drew, your thoughts. Yeah, I agree with you. I also love this verse from the book of Judges, and it says, and, the, and abandon the Lord, the God of their fathers, who had brought them out of Egypt. They went after other gods from the surrounding peoples and bowed down to them. They infuriated the Lord. Yep, that's exactly right. They did infuriate the Lord. Um, they, they really just went away from God. They went away from the will of God. And they went away from the, the blessings of God because they abandoned him, you know, and when we abandon God and start to follow after our own fleshly desires, our will for our own lives, instead of the will of God, then it, it, it messes up the plan of God. It messes up what God wants to do in and through you as an individual. And we've, we've seen that quite a bit, um, in America and all over the world. And, you know, we were never meant to follow idols. We were never meant to follow anything other than God, but yet we have come to this point in, um, in the, just the past 20 years or so when we have followed anything but God. Yeah. And historically speaking, we never were made to follow idols. God intended for us to worship him instead. However, because of the way the devil hijacked our perception about God, we have been given a mental filter that distorts the truths from the lies. Just look at what went down in Genesis chapter 3 when Eve was actively deceived by the serpent, a.k.a. the devil. She made Adam fall into the same trap of wanting the power to differentiate between the good and the evil in this world. Mm -hmm. You know, that's exactly right. We, we were not made to follow idols. And, and because we... Um, have this fleshly mindset the the devil will hijack with our thoughts he will mess with our thoughts mess with our mentality and give us something uh, give us a lie and make us feel good when we have whenever we follow anything but god but but it brings debt you know um there's there there's a scripture verse that says there's a way that seems right into a man but it ends in death i think it i think it's in proverbs but that's exactly right. We can have this way that will seem right to us because it feels good, looks good, smells good, tastes good, whatever. But it's not good because in the end, it will lead to death because it does not honor Christ. Our response to idolatry should be one of disgust, one of I'm going to follow Jesus instead of following uh, the ways of this world, instead of following what the devil has for me, what the will of the devil is. Uh, for my life yet we don't do that we our response to our uh, to idolatry is more idolatry we look towards the world for things we look towards books media social media um, celebrities 
friends, family, business, money, finances. Um, we look towards those things for peace. We look towards those things uh, for for recognition and and for just what we want instead of looking to God for those things. Yeah, and what I recognize in Revelation 4, 8, these are the four living creatures proclaiming this about God. Holy, 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 Lord God, the Almighty, who was, who is, and who is coming. So what they're saying is, the Lord is holy and worthy to be praised to repent of their idolatry. That's exactly right, because the Lord is good. The Lord is God. He is almighty. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He was and is and is to come uh, because he is God. He is holy, holy, holy. You know, I say this all the time. The leading attribute, the main attribute of God is his holiness, that he is set apart from everything else. And he can't be anywhere near sin. And idolatry is a sin. The first uh, few uh, commandments in the Ten Commandments we're talking about idolatry and putting God first instead of putting idols first. And we've broken that. We've broken the law of God and it demands, it demands judgment. It demands punishment, but the gospel makes it for us to where we don't have to have that punishment because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. We don't have to um, live in idolatry anymore when we can, worship worship jesus for what he is and who he is and what he's done for us yeah and a verse that's later on that talks about creation and how he created all things was revelation 4 11 which says our lord and god you are worthy to receive power there's the worthiness that we talked about a minute ago because you have created all things and because of your will they exist and were created so what god is what saying when through the author of revelation which is john is that he saw the elders bow down in front of christ and like lord you created everything you created things we should enjoy and these idols people are creating just hijacks that view of you of your worthiness and holiness yeah god the view of god is jacked up by what the devil does and what the devil has done but man, we need to return to scripture. We need to return to God, the gospel, um, and focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is worthy to receive power that because he did create all things and, and by Jesus, by God, all things were created through him, um, that he is God. He is the Lord above all things. And he is the only thing that ever has, ever, uh, ha have, ever has, ever will deserve that glory, that praise. You know, one of my favorite verses is, uh, first Corinthians 10 31, whether then you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. I'm not going to make myself an idol. I'm not going to put myself up with pride for anything that I do, whether it be this podcast or public speaking events or, or anything else, because I don't deserve it. I don't deserve to, to have the praise. I don't have deserve to have the glory. Only Jesus does. You know, an example of that is I was speaking at a conference in May of 2021. And when I got done speaking, everyone started chanting stone wall, stone wall, stone wall, because, you know, it's film walls perspective podcast. And I, as I was leaving the stage, they started saying that. And I go back to the microphone and I just, I, I tell them, this is not for me. I don't want this for me. I want to preach the gospel and be forgotten. This, this is the mindset that Christians should have preach the gospel and be forgotten. Um, I, I, I don't remember who said that, but I remember that it was on, uh, our, my friend Colin Allen's story uh, or bio on Instagram or Facebook or something. And that really just hit me, preach the gospel and be forgotten, you know, because we're not meant to live a life of fame and, and beca because it, it will end our lives on this earth will end, you know, it will not end the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is what should be preached. The kingdom of God and the gospel is what should be proclaimed to all the nations. And all Christians should be praising him and glorifying him and all that they say and do. Yet we have come to this selfie society where it's all about me, 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 my, my, mine. Uh, and when it should be about a kingdom society, a God society, a Jesus society, where it's for him, 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 because he is holy, holy, holy. He is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and who is coming. 
we need to glorify God, not anything else. We need to make God first instead of making idols first. Yeah. And for me, an example, because I'm an uncle of nephews and nieces, when I they get older, I don't want them to think of the achievements that I got. Yes, that's great to have. But instead, I want them to know that their uncle not only fears God, but worships him because he deserves all the glory and ultimately because he is worthy. He is worthy. And, you know, I, I want you all listeners to, to know that God is worthy. God is worthy because he is. I can't explain it to you. I don't want to explain it to you. I don't know how to explain it to you, but God is worthy of our praise. God is worthy because he is worthy. And that should be the only thing that, that matters to us. If the Bible says it's true, where if where, wherever there's a period in the Bible, don't put a question mark. You know, Pastor Phil said that on Sunday, when, whenever there is a period in the Bible, don't put a question mark because there's no point in that. God is worthy, yeah, and- period. God is love. God, God is worth our praise, period. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. And he is worthy to receive power because he created all things and because of your will, they exist and were created. Revelation 4, 11. That's the verse that Drew talked about earlier. Yeah. And another verse that really focuses on praising him because he's worthy and holy is Psalms 34, 3, which says, proclaim Yahweh's greatness with me. Let us exalt his name together. And what Yahweh means is just a name too sacred to be spoken. Mm-hmm. And our only response to that moment is to praise him instead of doing anything else that we see right in our eyes. Right. That's exactly right. You know, I have multiple verses that I, that I have first Corinthians 10, seven, do not be idolaters as some of them were, as it was written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. The the apostle Paul says, do not be idolaters as some of them were. Don't be idolaters. Don't idolize anything at all. You know, because it's not right. First Corinthians uh, 10, 14, uh, it says, therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry. First John 5, 21, dear children, keep yourselves from idols. Colossians 3, 5, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immor- immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Sin is idolatry because we are putting our will in front of God's will. Isaiah 45, 20, gather together and come, assemble, you fugitives from the nations, ignorant are those who carry about the idols of wood, who pray to gods that cannot save. Uh, Jonah 2, 8, those who cling to worthless idols, turn away God's love for them. Judges 10, 14, go out and cry to the gods you have chosen. Let them save you when you are in trouble. And you know what? When you ever, whenever you praise those gods, they're not going to save you because they aren't real. They don't exist. They can't save you. Jesus does. Levit- Leviticus 19, uh, verse 4, do not turn to idols or make metal gods for yourselves. I am the Lord, your God, and Lord is on all caps. Uh, Psalm 16, four, I could keep going and going and going. I have so many verses that right here in front of me that talk about idolatry and why we shouldn't have idols. Psalm 16, four, those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out lib- lib- libations of blood to such gods or take them uh, or take up their names on my lips. You know, that that's this is truth. This is indeed the truth of scripture that we should not idolize things. We should not make man-made idols and worship them. Yet we have it. We are a generation that does. And it's, it's a sad thing. So, so what do we do about this? Drew? We just have to remember what Jesus said in John 14, six, he said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. And in Luke 9, 23, If anyone wants to follow me, he must deny himself daily, take up his cross, and then follow me. And what Jesus is saying there in Luke 9, 23 is every day when we wake up, it should be a daily denial of our flesh. And realizing that the cross he's talking about back then was a death sentence. But today, we have to crucify our fleshly desires to the cross because that's what he wants from us. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. You know, we should be a generation that lives out... um, leading biblically 
um, and serving biblically and following Jesus biblically. We need God to move in our heart so that he can crush the idols in our lives and be seated on the throne of our heart. There should be no more waiting because today is the day that God wants us to submit to his will that he has for our lives. Today is the day that the Lord has made. That today is the day for salvation. Today is the day for turning away from sin. Today is the day for turning away for evil. And, and don't, don't do it too late. There, there is a time when it's too late to do that. And it's when you, when you pass away into eternity. Do it right now before you do pass away. Don't do it before you pass into eternity and Jesus says, get out of my sight. I never knew you. That's the scariest thing you'll ever hear. I don't want that to happen for anybody, any of my listeners, anyone I know, anyone I don't know. I don't want that to happen for anybody because that's eternity separated from Christ. Don't let, don't let this moment pass you by, listener, of not turning towards Christ. Yeah, and just literally what I've seen is, God wants our country to have a revival, but in order to do that, we need hearts that are submitted to him and submitted to his will. Because Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on upon your own understanding. Mm -hmm. And it just, that's the central theme of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. We have to trust the Lord and trust that even though we're going through COVID, even though we may get anxious about that, we should not because the Lord has control over it all. Mm -hmm. That's exactly Right. That is exactly right. The Lord does have control over it all. Uh, Drew, thank you so much for being on this episode. It's truly an honor to have you on. I love you, brother. You, like I said at the beginning of this episode, Drew is one of the kindest people on, on, the, on the face of the planet. He loves Jesus. He goes out of his way to serve Jesus and to serve other people because that's who he is, because he has been changed by Jesus. And, and you know, my church says this all the time. Uh, changed lives change lives and drew your life has changed others it's changed mine i've seen you who you are what you've done uh for the gospel for the kingdom of god the way that you serve and man it, it, it's truly um it's truly an honor to be a friend of yours truth thank you yeah and if there's anything that people that may not know me may know about me is i don't care if people remember my name when i die the only reason why i'm living is to live for christ and just have that for me to live as Christ to die is gain mentality. Mm -hmm. Philippians 1 and even living out first Timothy 4 12, which just talks about the different aspects of being a biblical leader and not having people despise the youth of the leader. Mm. Because in the end, everyone is called to be a leader. Exactly right. But we in, are all called to be but leaders. In, first, especially as, right. <clears throat> keep going. You can keep talking. But first we have to, if we want to lead, we have to learn how to lead ourselves and, and that really was a struggle for a while because along with one other person, I'm the leader of our group. And that's a daily denial of me wanting to follow my own ways, but ultimately following the ways of Christ. Because if we're going to have an emotionally healthy leadership in our group, we have to have people that choose to forsake the things of this world and live out Christ's mission in our lives, mm. which is the Great Commission. And the Great Commission, yeah. if you need a reminder, is this. Go out, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And behold, I will be with you all, all throughout the age. Amen. Well, Drew, thank you so much for being a guest in this episode. Thank you all for listening. If you um, need anything, if you want to meet Drew, uh, let me know, and I'll let him know that you want to meet him, um, and we'll, we'll get something set up. Uh, Drew, thank you so much for being on once again. God bless you all, and goodbye.